Hi, in this video, I will be showing you problem number 1 of chapter 8, section 3. An aquarium is 4 feet long, 2 feet wide and 3 feet deep. Is full of water. Recall that the weight density of water is 62.5 lb per feet cube. A. Find the hydrostatic pressure on the bottom of the aquarium. B. Find the hydrostatic force on the bottom of the aquarium. C. Find the hydrostatic force on one end of the aquarium. So, uh, have a look at the picture that we have drawn, which is 4 feet length, 2 feet wide and then 3 feet deep. It's an aquarium. Then recall that the weight density of water is given in the problem, which is uh, 62.5 um, lb per feet cube. It is the force per unit volume, so it is lb per feet cube. So now the first part of the question is asking us to find the hydrostatic pressure on the bottom of the aquarium. So pressure at the bottom of the aquarium is given to be uh, delta D. So notice here I have written the formula in two different ways. If the, if the problem is one of SI system where uh, the measures are meters and the force is measured in Newton, then we have to use the formula rho G D where rho stands for the mass density and uh, it could be mass density of water or it could be mass density of any liquid that you use. G is the acceleration due to gravity. D is uh, the depth of the liquid. So uh, this is the formula we would use if uh, the system was one of SI system. For US customary units where the measures are feet and pounds, so here that is the case because we have give, we are given um, the length of the aquarium is 4 feet, the rest of the units are in feet and the force is measured in um, pounds. So we have to use and then delta is given as weight density. There is a difference between weight density and the mass density. Um, if it is weight density, then rho times g, this whole thing would be the delta. So that is what given in this problem. So we have to use pressure equal to delta times D formula. So delta is 62.5 LB per feet cube. And then that depth. So we are measuring the hydrostatic pressure on the bottom of the aquarium. So the liquid is on the entire height because the water is, the aquarium is full of water. So the entire height the water occupies. So the height of the aquarium is 3. So the bottom, the pressure is due to the entire height of the liquid which is due to 3 feet. So it is times 3 feet. So depth is 3 feet and delta is 62.5 lb per feet cube. So, you can use your calculator to compute this or you can directly do it, which is 187.5 LB per feet square because 1 foot F, 1 feet here on the numerator, 1 feet at the denominator will get cancelled out. So, leaving you with 187.5 LB per feet square. So, that is the pressure on the bottom of the aquarium. That is the first part. The second part is asking us to find the hydrostatic force. The formula for the force is pressure multiplied by the area. So pressure is what we found. Uh, in other words, uh, we have uh, the pressure equal to force per unit area. So force is equal to pressure multiplied by area. So pressure is what we found out from part A, which is 187.5 LB per feet square. And then, because the question is hydrostatic force on the bottom of the aquarium for part B, the bottom of the aquarium is 4 feet length and 2 feet wide. So the area will be 4 feet 
multiplied by 2 feet. In other words, it's 8 feet square. So if you compute this, it's going to be uh, 1,500 feet square and feet times feet, they get cancelled out. So it will be 1,500 LB. So that is part B. So the part C is asking us to find the hydrostatic force on one end of the aquarium. So we will take uh, the one end to be the end with the base 2 feet. So here I have shown the figure uh, for 2 feet is the base and the height equal to 3 feet. So we are going to consider uh, the hydrostatic force on one end of the aquarium. The difference between the hydrostatic force on the bottom which is part B versus hydrostatic force on one end. Now when you consider the bottom the entire liquid on the aquarium in the aquarium is applying pressure on the bottom. So the height, uh, height or the depth of the liquid is constant so we just consider um, D equal to 3, 3 feet that is hydrostatic force on the um, I mean uh, hydrostatic pressure on the bottom of the aquarium that is part A. So we just multiply by 3 feet per part A. Here um, the height of the liquid at every instant is changing because we are finding um, the hydrostatic force on one end of the aquarium. So we are considering this part of the aquarium. So the height of the liquid at any instant is not a constant. So here the height uh, is different than the height over there. So each instant um, the height is changing. So we are going to do this in a different way by using the Riemann sum method or which converts to the integral method. So I've shown a figure here. So that this is two feet. This is this part is this part over here and then the height which is three feet which is three feet over here is this part. So we are finding the hydrostatic force on one end of the aquarium here. So now we are going to um, because the height is changing at different uh, at different instances so we are going to place an imaginary origin um, at the top of the aquarium where because the liquid the water is full here so at the top of the aquarium the origin is placed and then the downward x-axis will be the positive x-axis because um, that's the way we measure the distance here. So this distance is going to be the height of the aquarium which is 3. So I'm going to divide this 0 to 3 into number of sub-intervals, um, number of partition points say x1, x2 and so on. Each interval is of uniform width which is delta x. And then we are going to use, we are going to find out what um, the force is on this strip, on this ith layer. I have considered the ith layer of water here. So we are going to consider what the force on the ith layer of water is. And then we are going to add all the forces on all layers of water. That's going to give us the Riemann sum. Then that's going to translate to the integral. So first in order to find out the force on this ith layer which is of width delta x um, we are going to first find out the area of the ith strip of water. So area of ith strip of water. Area is anyway base multiplied by height the length multiplied by width or uh, here base multiplied by this small strip of water which is of delta x width. So all, uh, all over the aquarium the measure is the same, the, the width is the same. So it is going to be 2 feet multiplied by delta x feet which is going to be 2 delta x feet square. So that is the area of this ith layer of water. Now what is the pressure applied on this height layer of water? The pressure on the height strip. 
pressure by formula is delta times distance, I mean delta times the depth. So it is delta times depth. The delta is given in our problem which is 62.5. So then delta multiplied by depth. So the depth of water on the eighth layer of water is placed at the xi distance from the origin. So whenever you apply the pressure, whenever you find out the pressure, you have to find out the measure, the distance of liquid above the strip. So the distance of the liquid water above the strip here is xi. So it is delta times xi. So delta is uh, Lb per feet cube and uh, this will be feet. So it is um, Lb uh, times uh, Lb divided by feet square. Now that is the pressure. That's now we are going to apply uh, the force on this eighth layer of water. Force equal to pressure multiplied by area. So pressure is delta xi. Area is 2 times delta x. This is just the pressure on the eighth layer of liquid or water here. So the total pressure on one end on one end of the aquarium is actually sigma i varying from 1 to n uh, delta xi to delta x. So this you are going to divide this whole height into number of sub intervals and you are going to divide this in number of layers of water and you are uh, you are finding the pressure on each and every layer of water so entire pressure would be uh, delta x i sigma delta x i 2 delta x but the question is what is the pressure on one end of the aquarium so total pressure this you are going to convert that to um, the integral so this is nothing but the Riemann sum we are going to divide the number of intervals too many. That is, as in approaching infinity, you are going to get the total pressure, total force. So, we can consider force which is equal to limit as n approaching infinity of sigma or uh, i varying from 1 to n delta xi to delta x. In other words, it is sigma f of i, i varying from 1 to n. This can be, this is the Riemann sum and we are going to convert that to uh, the integral. So, hydrostatic force on one end of the aquarium is limit, I mean integral um, 0 through 3, right? that is 0 through 3, then delta x to dx. In the Riemann sum, xi will change to x, delta x will change to dx. So this would be approximately 62.5 which is the value of delta I am pulling that outside times 2. So I am pulling the delta and 2 outside. Then it will be integral 0 to 3 x dx. So it is um, 62.5 times 2 and integrate that to that would be x square over 2 between 0 and 3. So that will be 62.5 times 2. So it will be 9 over 2. So it will be 9 over 2 over here. So 3 square that is 9 over 2. Denominate at the lower limit it is 0. So it will be 62.5 times 9 which is 562.5 LBs. So when you do the hydrostatic 
uh, force on one end of the aquarium keep in mind uh, the distance is